Right, what's going on there, guys? Uh, once again, had to redo the update here. It is the Earthmaster on the stream uh, with an update video on this Wednesday evening, December 29, 2021 is the date, about 6.07 p.m. California time here along the West Coast and quite the active day of earthquake activity, uh, especially out here around the Banda Sea, Indonesia area where we've seen a 7.3 earthquake strike earlier today. Originally coming in as a 7.6 magnitude earthquake uh, from the EMSC that dropped down uh, by the USGS to 7.3. Uh, 7 Looking at aftershock activity ramping up pretty significantly uh, within that region of the epicenter. There is the map of the USGS 2.5 and above, of course, on the states 4.0 internationally, zooming in around the Banda Sea area. Can see quite a bit of movement following that 7.3 earthquake earlier today. Most of this earthquake and aftershock sequences following the original depth of that uh, epicenter, which is about 166.9 kilometers below the surface. All these uh, other earthquake aftershocks are following that same trend. Up here to the north, a little oddball 4.3 at 74 kilometers. We haven't seen a whole lot of movement over here to the west around the Java Trench northward. Uh, but uh, possible we could see things ramp up here uh, due to that movement down south here. We are looking at a little bit further activity way west here around the Iran area where we've seen a 4.2 strike within the last hour. Some movement up north here in the Capsin Sea, Caspian Sea. Uh, looking at, uh, what's the magnitude here? 4.5 in the Russia area, 10 kilometers below the surface. I don't recall too much earthquake activity up there, but it does happen. Also around the Greece region, some of this activity taking place uh, throughout the day and earlier this morning, 5.7, 5.1, and a 4.2 lined up right outside of Crete. Looking over here to the west, the Atlantic Ocean looks pretty darn quiet. Not a whole lot going on through Greenland southward. South Sandwich Trench, very quiet today as well. Uh, a little bit of activity along the South America region. I want to jump back over here to the uh, 7.3 here and give you guys a pretty good look at the activity that can strike out here in this region. This pretty uh, pretty active area. Uh, deja vu. It feels like I've already done this. Hmm. Okay, so looking at this trail of activity, some of these deeper earthquakes here in the darker circles, the more shallow earthquakes in the white circles, uh, those are actually pretty shallow, uh, roughly... Um, Oh, I don't remember the uh, depth here. Let's see what we got. Less than uh, 70 kilometers. And then we got uh, the deep ones here. Over 300 and then some moderate 170 to 300. So a lot of activity within this region does take place here pretty deep. Uh, so it's not uncommon to see some large earthquakes as well. We're talking probably uh, eight at least an eight, possibly over eight in some of these regions. You can see those much larger circles indicating that uh, larger movement there in the region. So it's a hot spot of activity when it comes to plate tectonics here. And large earthquakes happen there very uh, commonly, very common. Um, up here to the north, the East China Sea region around the uh, Taiwan area, a couple of earthquakes up here, um, somewhat shallow. Looks like just outside of Japan, 4.8 and 4.5 along the trench here, inland. Some activity further north around the uh, Tokyo area with a pair of four, uh, we got a 4.7 and a 4.2. Uh, looks like just outside of the uh, uh, Tokyo area, northward Japan Trench and the Kuril Kamchaka Trench all pretty quiet except for this inland deep 4.7 earthquake that struck earlier today. Uh, that's 404.1 uh, kilometers for that deep earthquake there. We are still seeing some movement in the subduction zone up here of the Aleutian Trench. Even though this activity uh, looks like looks like it's pretty shallow, the majority of it is. Uh, but it's something to watch pretty closely because it is um, kind of heightened up a little bit. I don't know if there's leading if this is leading to something much bigger. Uh, there was a 5.0 right smack dab on the Aleutian Trench, a little bit uh, 
deeper, 32 kilometers, than these earthquakes here, which were at 10. Uh, so I would be on guard watching this area pretty closely. The satellite view, I want to kind of see what's out here when it comes to, uh, well, I'll go over here to the ocean. Not a whole lot of activity, or at least uh, views. Um, so yeah, just kind of kind of odd. Got to watch that pretty closely there when we see some swarming activity here around the uh, a major subduction zone over here. The Aleutian Trench, rest of it eastward. Uh, very minor earthquake activity scattered up and about into Alaska. Nothing significant showing up there in the Alaska region today, at least in that part of Alaska. Pacific Northwest and the Intermountain West region starting to come alive again with some activity up here around the Mount Rainier area, just outside of Mount Rainier and uh, north of Mount St. Helens. A couple small microquakes around the region and the Seattle Fault up here is still kind of showing some deep mo movement here with 1.3 just southwest of Seattle. Uh, Oregon looks pretty quiet. Uh, return of a little bit. I'm, I'm not going to call this a swarm. It's just a little, little bit of activity around the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone over the last 24 hours. Uh, 3.6 is the largest, pretty shallow earthquake. At, well, actually, no, take that back. 23.4 kilometers. Uh, pretty deep for this region here. Uh, most of the deep activity confined, most of the time, confined to this area uh, where these other four earthquakes are at, which were uh, 27, 27, 22 kilometers deep into the uh, southern end of the Cascadia. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, trimmer map uh, real quick. Let me key this up here. 28 epicenters of trimmer along the, uh, it looks like Northern California area, subduction zone, Cascadia. Down dip here, you're getting that trimmer activity kicking up a little bit. Not a whole lot. Most of this activity looks pretty uh, spread out throughout the day as well. So 28 epicenters total today. Uh, back to the Yellowstone map here. Not a whole lot going on. Just that signature of the uh, 7.3. And uh, a lot of this activity not showing up on these other seismograph stations due to the uh, improper tuning, or at least they're, they're toned down to where it doesn't pick up the uh, uh, activity as much as these other stations do. Definitely a sizable earthquake can show up many, many miles away, thousands of miles away when it comes to this type of magnitude here from from uh, the Band of Sea area to Yellowstone in Wyoming. That's the signature picking up pretty nicely. So not, not a whole lot of movement, no uh, microquakes, anything going on here at Yellowstone National Park. Looks pretty uh, quiet for the most part. I know someone, I've uh, seen actually quite a few comments here about uh, an earthquake in Indiana earlier. That was roughly around the same time that the 7.3 struck in the Indonesia area. There was no Indiana earthquake, and uh, if anything did show up here on the map, it was due to a false reading. Uh, a lot of times, as i just shown here, the earthquake signature can be picked up on a seismograph station thousands of miles away. And if they are not uh, set up right, they can send out preliminary false data of a localized earthquake. In that case, uh, 6.1 in Indiana. Uh, just But what it was was the 7.3 kicking up here. On uh, I'm sure some, gra some station there in Indiana sent out a false report if that's the case. But uh, I didn't see the report. All I know is quite a few folks reported uh, some type of earthquake there in Indiana, which was not the case because that would have been all over the place. Uh, even a five-pointer or a four-pointer would have been all over the place here as far as uh, social media goes. Uh, let's see, California, the rest of California, some movement along the eastern crest of the Sierra Nevadas, including some activity once again under Lake Almanor, a 2.7 and a 2.3 earthquake right smack dab underneath there. And some further movement here in the Pyramid Lake, Nevada area on the northern end. Roughly about 7 to 8 kilometers down. Some microquake swarming taking place there uh, in the state of Nevada. Uh, further down south, we kind of jump over the Tonopah and the Long Valley Super Volcano area. Just some spotty movement there. Nothing really to discuss. Uh, same for the Ridgecrest area. Just a little bit of movement along that fracture area, but still seeing some swarming like we have been seeing in the Coso Volcanic Field, Coso, Coso Range, 
kind of some ancient volcanic uh, activity and this is pretty shallow too it looks like one to one to three kilometers or so for this uh, swarming activity in that region which uh, obviously shows some volcanic features on the surface there of of, uh, of this map hop back over here to the uh, terrain and get rid of all of these down south a little bit of movement uh, around the Lancaster Sandra's fault looks uh, pretty quiet for the most part. Looks like one maybe right smack dab on it earlier, 1.0 near Banning. Some movement kicking up here within the last hour in the Los Angeles jungle area near Carson, California. A little swarm of movement. Uh, this is pretty deep for this area. And I'm not 100% certain which fault zone that is on. Uh, there's a couple. Let's see here. couple of them up north here looks like or uh, around the region I can't get this for some reason I can't get this uh, fault system to show up when we're zoomed in not for sure but anyway uh, it's a ways away from any major fault at least a few miles away from this specific fault zone down here and kind of deep for this area uh, 2.3 is the largest. Looks like about 10 kilometers for some of this activity. I don't know if somebody's drilling down into the earth there below their house. Who knows? Probably not. But uh, zoom into the concrete jungle here and see where this activity is occurring. The reason why I call it concrete jungle, folks, because look at it. It's all been um, redefined with man's, man's concrete and pavement and houses. And, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's a huge, massive concrete jungle that you can see through space, and it's just, it's crazy. That's kind of why I call it the concrete jungle, because it is. And uh, zooming into this area here, let's see what we got out here. It's really hard to tell. It looks like some industrial type um, activity as well. I'm not for sure what those are, but uh, that activity occurring pretty close to these uh, little earthquakes popping up down there in Southern Cal. Uh, so yeah, just some movement down there. Let's see what else is going on here in the uh, Southern California region. Salt and Sea looks pretty quiet. Um, nothing on the Imperial Fault. Actually, look at Southern California kind of lighten up a little bit down here outside of the main zones, which is the uh, San, well, the uh, San Jacinto Fault area is almost always active. That's kind of quiet tonight. Uh, we are, but we are seeing some activity around the Palomar. Uh, observatory it looks like right correct actually no we're I'm way off here I'm used to seeing the uh, Palomar observatory light up like crazy from all the earthquakes but uh, this activity occurring uh, around the Elsinore fault did I say it correctly if I did yay um, over here a little bit of movement off the coast of San Diego as well uh, 1.6 15 kilometers so little deep movement into the um, Pacific side of the plate boundary here into Southern California. Uh, uh, the uh, desert southwest, pretty uh, quiet. Seen some movement here in the uh, Texas area, it looks like. I'm not for sure what's going on. It's almost like on my computer I have an invisible window that won't let me click on stuff. Now it's working. Okay. Um, yeah. So activity around the Pecos, Texas. Uh, even one way over here. That's over by. It kind of looks like it's around Jasper area. There's Longview, Tyler, Texas. Jasper. Where's Jasper at? Maybe I'm way off here. Jasper's way down south here. Beautiful little town. I love traveling through there when I'm uh, out storm chasing. I almost always stay in Jasper in my travels to Texas and Oklahoma area when I'm storm chasing in the spring. 2.6 in the Texas area of, uh, ooh, I don't even know that town. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna even attempt that one. Five kilometers below the surface for that little earthquake, kinda in an odd area. Some movement up in Oklahoma as well. South Carolina getting in on a little bit of activity. The uh, rest of the country, including Indiana, quiet. Uh, let's see what else we got. 
Puerto Rico, not a whole lot going on there today. It looks pretty absent of movement. I'm not for sure what's going on with this. It seems like when I click here, in the middle, I don't know. Weird, maybe I'm losing my, losing my marbles. So movement uh, north, this one right here, a little 3.3, pretty shallow, uh, just outside the Puerto Rico trench region. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We checked out Trimmer, we checked out the Yellowstone map, pretty quiet. Let's check out the Earthquakes Canada map, see if there's anything new being reported by those folks up there. And yeah, a little bit of activity over here in the north. Let's go ahead and pull up the plate boundaries. And the legend shows the latest earthquake up here off the coast of, um, let's see where this is at. Okay, what is that? Little little earthquake within the last, uh, looks like earlier today, a little 1.4, 77 kilometers south of Village of Queen, Charlotte, BC area. And I was looking at the Cascadia subduction zone. There's a little bit of further activity here. Uh, within the last day outside of this latest quake. Uh, so kind of watching that plate boundary up there, the Pacific North American plate. The Cascadia subduction zone sits here. That uh, looks at least the northern end. looks pretty quiet. There's some movement. Uh, very small activity here. I don't know if I can click on that one. 1 1.3 occurring earlier today. Uh, that one about 25, 25.2 kilometers pretty deep earthquake activity in that region. I believe that's a subduction zone quake on the northern end of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. All areas south look pretty quiet, except for the movement, uh, of course, off northern California region. Uh, so yeah, just, uh, just a lot of uptick over here towards the west, folks, over the last 24 hours. And kind of kind of calm right now. North American plate, South America plate, but uh, that can always change. We'll be, uh, we'll definitely be prepared. Checking out the Solar Ham uh, website showing the solar activity. Uh, looks like earlier another M. Well, there's a 1.6 that kicked up here. I believe it was that one two days ago. Nothing within the last. Uh, uh, nothing yesterday or today. It looks like looks pretty minimal. If that's the latest data. The solar flare, th flare threat is diminishing. Only a 65% chance of a C flare, X flare at 5%. And the sunspots are disappearing right before our eyes. All these are starting to decay and uh, just go away. And looking on the far side of the sun here, the earth facing side looks clear. Once 29.16 goes away. But uh, still low threat of some C flare activity from that uh, dynamic sunspot. Uh, what else we got here, folks? Anything popping out here in the ocean with the uh, buoy system? Always like to check that, see if anything's in event mode. Of course, most of the time it never is, but you just never know. It's always fun to watch these things. All looks calm out there in the oceans of the world. All right, guys, I am going to jump off here. Um, I am going to... Uh, a little trip tomorrow with the uh, Missy Mimi's. We're gonna check out. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you folks seen on the social media um, about the weather we've been having here in Northern California. A lot of uh, snow, a lot of rain. Went up to the snow here uh, today. Took the kids up there. It was pretty fun. It was a blast. But uh, we're gonna go up to the Truckee area on Interstate 80. I believe they will be open, but. There's supposed to be a massive amount of snow up there. I'm talking, uh, I don't know how many feet, 12, 14 feet or so of snow, maybe more. Uh, so we're going to go up there and check that out and uh, see if we can catch some good video and some good pictures. And uh, when we do, we'll share them. I may even go live when I'm up there just to show you guys the massive amount of snowfall uh, that's been, snow that's been uh, happening in the Sierras. It's an excellent year. So FYI, guys, the ones that watch the seismographs, this station right here called uh, Dinsmore, California, is my replacement for the Petrolia seismograph station. The Petrolia station is the one I normally monitor uh, the activity in the north northwestern part of California, southern end of the Cascadia for earthquake activity. So it wasn't working. 
I tried to access it numerous, numerous times and it wouldn't let me. So I had to pull up a, dis, uh, a little bit different station, but within the same vicinity of the Petrolia station, Dinsmore, California, around the Eureka area. So that, that uh, seismograph station is showing some activity, but minor and very light. Uh, there is some movement, it looks like, in the BC area, uh, way up north Canada area, at the northern end of the Cascadia, uh, potentially showing some earthquake activity on the live seismograph, but uh, nothing significant. Uh, this here is, of course, Solomon Islands. And uh, here's the BC station uh, coming up around the bend right here where the hand is. That's going to be the little earthquake spike. Uh, a lot of people asking about it. Uh, how do you read these? You know, what, what are they about? Well, they're live seismograph stations. And uh, for the most part, these little earthquakes right here are just that. They're just little ones. If you're going to have a big earthquake, uh, these amplitudes over here to the left, they really skyrocket. And for the most part, these lines here, this thick line, will go down to a very thin line with a very sharp uh, earthquake signature. That's kind of how you can read some of the uh, uh, some of the earthquake activity. Like for example, the 7.3 that struck earlier today um, showed up uh, pretty nicely, almost well a minute or so after the main shake. Uh, showed up on all of these seismograph stations in a wavy uh, type fashion, kind of like ringing the bell of the earth in a frequency of of, uh, of uh, a wave, if you will. I can't really can't really explain it other than a wave, but it's pretty cool to watch when those large earthquakes do come into the seismograph stations. But uh, for the most part, no activity on this, no activity on this one. If there were. This would be flatlined and there'd be a, a distinct spike on here. So had a few folks asking me about it. Uh, I, f I told them I would uh, give just a little brief um, remark on you know how to read them. As far as the magnitudes go, uh, sometimes I can read them if they're localized, if, they're, uh, if the earthquakes are very localized and uh, almost right next to the seismograph station, then I can kind of get a measurement of these amplitudes on how to read the magnitudes but they're not a hundred percent accurate all the time so all right guys i'm gonna jump off here uh enough blabbering i will chat you guys tomorrow look for a live stream tomorrow from northern california uh, around the uh donner summit area of northern california where we got just a massive amount of snow i can't wait to see it um so look for that live stream tomorrow we'll chat, chat you guys tomorrow have a good night peace out everyone